It's irrigation water from the aquifer that's been contaminated by the nuclear weapons. Complex sure. There. Okay, Tom. Yeah. That russet Idaho yeah. potato story, okay. that's very interesting. Well, okay, well, the third thing was that I flew back to the Hong Kong area over the Bering Strait between Alaska and uh-huh. Siberia. Okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. I, could see, I could see the Arctic Ocean. I was sitting on the right side, on the northern side. I could see it about 2.02 coming through the window there. Okay? Oh, my. Micro sea was very uh-huh. radioactive. Yeah. Uh-huh. Northern uh-huh. Pacific coast. Then I look down at the ice, and there it is, just like, like that lake in Colorado. It's cracked. Long, cracked. Huh. Yeah. And as I suggested before, probably caused by tritium somehow chemically cracking the ice. It's not like melting properly. It's just cracking along the long line. Uh-huh. This is phenomenal. Then the place is down there with Siberia, where the Siberian high pressure zone in the air pushes radiation away from Russia, uh, away the Japanese radiation doesn't get in so much because there's a constant uh, air, air pressure factor, the wind's blowing uh, eastward. So, And the lake you live is there, perfectly frozen, no crack. No crack, though, just, you know, perfect. That's amazing. Uh, we're seeing more and more evidence yeah, so, as this so, thing uh, evolves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Exactly, that the destruction of the Arctic... Is, is, is caused by the radiation yeah. from Fukushima, by the tritium. I mean, there's just really no okay, denying it. I haven't written you that long article on the atmosphere set, but I'll, I'll get around to it because uh, actually it was good. It was held off because I got some photos of this stuff. Oh, good. And, uh, more All right. Observation yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are okay, you going to... Dana, I'd like to hear. Okay, Dana, uh, step on here. The, the, uh, the big story really follows on with the reports from the Fukushima area, which really aren't new about the trees showing signs of radioactive exposure, uh, mutations, genetic mutations. We've seen the insects mutated, butterflies, moths. We've seen uh, plants mutated, all kinds of things. I had some mutations here in southern Oregon. Uh, the wild mustard plant's supposed to grow about, you know, two, three feet maybe, uh, I had, I think, seven or eight of them that were about eight to nine feet tall. I've never in my life seen anything like that. I took pictures of them. So the after effects of the catastrophe of coming up on five years ago now are beginning to manifest themselves more and more, topped off by what may be clear, grotesque evidence of genetic mutations in that mountain lion. Yeah, that was crazy pictures i got them on my computer <laughs> snatch snatch you know that uh, a tree is a huge wealth for insects just amazing amount of insects and uh, little creatures from the forest uh, survive around a tree so all of them would have been affected yeah my guess on that one the, the main thing people you know i've been out of the game now for about six days i finally come to a stop after two years first time <laughs> it's kind of weird and it's hard i'm still doing all the kinds of Research and what we see, Canada is going to spend twenty six billion just in Ontario on a couple of power plants. Uh, I just done the numbers on it huh. just before we went live, uh-huh. and that's going to, of course, going to go over cost and everything. But that's enough to give everybody in Canada four thousand dollars for solar power for their houses or something. Say, for instance, and they're just going to burn it up on that. That's not counting how much. Now it's these are cost. are these new nuke plants. These are old ones. They're going to uh, up, update yeah, them. Mm-hmm. Sorry? They're going to upgrade them? Right, over the next 11 years or something. And it's too start immediately. And Canada has just announced uh, today that it's going to lead a UN anti-nuke effort. Oh, oh really? Yeah, go figure that one out. Is that in between welcoming more and more uh, Muslim refugees? Uh, <laughs> that's another story. Know. Yeah, you know, you know my opinions on stuff like that. It's, yeah, yeah. It goes on for an hour. <laughs> Yeah, there's another name in nuclear that nobody bothers to mention, but it's a stupid big player out there. Uh, well known in the mining industry is Lucas London, uh, L-U-N-D-I-N. Everybody should really look at that name. And most people think here in British Columbia, Vancouver even, that the richest person is Patterson, but it's actually not. It's a man known as Lucas. Uh, now, 
he's in the Globe and Mail all the time, constantly. That's where you find most of the, the data on him and talks about it. Globe and Mail sells uranium stocks, mm-hmm. and they're connected to the Canadian government. They're the biggest producer, uh, biggest news seller in Canada for paperback. And I was just going through it today, hardcore, and it's a fascinating story, really, when you think about He's a corporate raider, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so what he ended up doing was uh, he he manufactured the rise in uranium stocks through the help of the media and stuff like that Mm. because he benefits off it dramatically. Sure. His dad, yeah, and I'll just end it on that, that his dad got his start in mining. That's where he got his money from, uh, Adolf Luden. He got his money from, originally going, it's a really interesting story. He went to Saudi Arabia and he wanted to do oil exploration, then the Saudis wouldn't let him, uh, UAE. And so he he made a bet that it would rain in the desert the next afternoon to one of the princes and they, for a million dollars. And he lost a bet and gave him a million dollars. And shortly after, he got a uh, permit to look for oil or gas. No kidding. He he, he, he found one of the biggest deposits there. Sorry, go ahead. That's remarkable. Uh, yeah, he bet, he bet him a million dollars <laughs> and he won. Of course. <laughs> How funny. How could you not win, right? And yeah. He money right away. And, but shortly after, he managed to get his kick into the door. Yeah. And so his son has turned around, and he's got mines all over the planet for gold and stuff like that. But he's really pushing the, the uranium here. Now, Tepco, as, uh, as Yoshi has wrote his article, Tepco owns a big share of Cigar Lake. He owns Cigar Lake, for instance. He owns Denston Mines and the uh, Fissions products he scooped those up for next to nothing after fukushima i guess yeah after fukushima and Mm -hmm. the the big thing there is of course here's canada not going to come out and play and yet they back them 100 percent. and canada is going as the major player against un for anti-nuke but at the same time canada is burning up 26 million on darlington bruce nuclear power plant to to re uh now like Yoshi was talking earlier, it was really interesting. He's talking about uh, the ice cracking up because of the tritium. And tritium uh, is uh, 3H. It's water that's irradiated, basically, and it accepted an extra electron. And that's why it's it's a dirty bomb in every sense of that word. And it's got a 120-year lifespan, uh, uh-huh. 20 half year half life. Uh-huh. Uh, but he's right in saying that, that that could be an issue, too, where it cracks the ice. I don't know myself personally. I'm just, like you said, we're guessing on that one. But if you look at all the studies, what it does show is that it's water. It acts like water. It goes that same path as water. Hmm. And that one in particular, because we're mostly water, and uh, the potatoes and everything are highly dependent upon that water. And it, it, it's a really invasive one. Like Once again, folks, Pre-Fukushima, the numbers around uh, the planet were around eight becquerels per cubic meter, and there's a 1,000 liters in a cubic meter. Right. And now there's a 7 million uh, becquerels, atomic decays, in a cubic meter. That's the size of people's hot tubs. But if, uh, about so 8,000 to 7 million. No, from eight. Just yeah. eight. Oh, eight. just eight. Eight, yeah, eight. only. Oh, yeah. my. Left over from the nuclear testing. Wow. And, yeah, and now it's 7 million becquels in the same volume. Is this supposedly a safe exposure amount? No, not even close to it. All the pre, all this pre-Fukushima studies shows that it, major I mean, studies. On the I mean, the government, the government's claiming that that's right. okay. Drinking water standard now yeah. is 7,000 nice. man-made, just, just those uh, in particular, uh-huh. just, you know, so many others, but yeah, 7,000 in a liter of water, but we absorb water, the way it works in our food, the way, uh, so like you say, once again, the ice pack is missing from British Columbia, from all the mountain ranges. Yeah, you said no snow, no ice pack, no nothing. nothing. And so what Yoshi was talking about with the ice is going to happen there, it happen, it's going to happen everywhere, because there's, if there's so much that we got 7 million in a cubic meter, then this whole planet is polluted, just with tritium. Unbelievable. That's, shock, that's a shocking uh, that, That's amazing. That is Yoshi. Come on in here. That's uh, that's a shock. Yeah, seven that, seven that, million. That, that is stunning. Yeah, that stunning. It's like a recipe for total extermination. That's what it is. I mean, you know, things aren't going to last. We're all going to. I mean, the next generation. Yeah, you know, one thought comes to my mind. What do they do with all the human children now being born with these you know, jawbones coming out of the top of their head? 
You know, well, they got probably an epidemic. Yeah. <laughs> it's called infanticide. Sorry, it's called you left. infanticide. I, it is. It should be infanticide. I mean, that word that word fits because they're having babies born now in uh, the tri cities, yeah. as I mentioned. No yeah. brains, no yeah. brain, just an empty cavity. What we're saying. No one's talking about this disaster that's fall, befallen families all over the world now because of this. No one's right. talking about it. So when they talk these numbers. The end result is in that cougar. That cougar is a thing. That cougar is us. We look in the mirror. It's our children, okay? It's our children to be. This is not a happy sight at all. Now, I mean, what this amounts to on the ground in every household is not, it's like my friends in Colorado. I two kids, okay? 20, you know, I mean, and their dining room table is radioactive. What more can we say? Their food is radioactive. Their gardens are radioactive. Their water is radioactive. What can we do? And you know, what are we going to do? We're doing nothing now. The government's done nothing. The, the then, best, the uh, best okay, thing. Question. Go ahead, Yoshi. The question for Dana is: What was that fellow's name again? The tycoon, the uranium mining tycoon. Lucas, tycoon? Lucas, London, London, D I N, L U N D I N, Lucas, oh, London, London, okay. no, okay. London. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he's I, really I, pushing I it hard. That's very. <laughs> Very interesting is I wonder how much Lucas London donates to all these universities out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all day, all day, man. I've been all day, all day with the names of the mines looking. <laughs> you wouldn't believe you, what I found. Yeah. I can't give it away. We're quite good at this. Oh, you found uh, it. Well, I don't understand it enough. If to, I was you know, London, tell the story. If I was yeah. London, I would, want, I would want my guys to have a seat on the world's anti nuclear committee. Let's face it, right? Let's oh, uh, that's, that's the way to play it, I yeah. I want my guys on Chicago Police Board, right? I mean, a commission of uh, <laughs> police. I would want all the guys, wouldn't I? Yeah, sure. Wouldn't I? Yeah. Sure you would. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. But I'll make <laughs> checks by Canada and England soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One other little point about Canada. Apparently, they, they, they developed this reactor called the CANDU, C-A-N-D-U reactor, uh, which apparently produces more tritium, you know, uh, per kilowatt hour than any other type of reactor in the ah, world. So Canada slick. just like uh, just going, they just guns lazy. They're just going straight into this thing. Uh, they get care of the last. They don't have a real fondness for the United States or America, you know, the, the other side of the border. So they figure we'll have a jet stream and push all the filth down there. So you know, Americans got to, you know, Americans have to think about their allies. You know, I mean, we're worried about you know the Americans bomb, you know, small thing, terrible thing, bad thing, but. A lot more radiation is coming today from Japan and from Canada, from its allies. So, you know, choose your allies carefully, see what they're doing. And if they're using your country as a dumping ground, I think even Washington and every state in America have to start looking at this. Look at, you know, I mean, this is where the big cats roam. And yeah. the cats hey, hey, Yoshi, climate yeah. scientists, like they're, they're pro-nuclear 100%. That's what they. That's what they exist for. That one thing only, and that that seems to be the real problem. Everybody's inundated with the climate scientist yeah. narratives, and it's a new yeah. genre. Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. Well, they're pro money. I guess they just want to get money, and when it, the money comes from you know uh, new repeated sources, they'll keep their mouth shut. You know, I mean, if you know senators in. Uh, uh, and congressmen in Las Vegas and uh, university professors in uh, uh, Nevada, they don't, they don't criticize the gambling industry very much, do they? I mean, I think that's the same situation in Canada. These scientists just want the money, and they can care the less about, you know, other people's children. Or they don't know. They don't they care. The uh, they well, don't. Uh, well, actually, don't a climate scientist is trained. Is trained to substitute yeah. nuclear for solar or anything else. So, so they actually understand the difference, yeah. and they bought into it, they and they think that, uh, yeah. the, that the bad is okay because there's some good there somehow or another. I'm sorry, that's what they portray, but they know difference. They know the difference. They know the difference in every sense of that yeah. word, but they're the ones who get all the traction, yeah. right? So it, there's no yeah. such thing as nuclear scientists coming out. And by the way, uh, I done an interview last week with a nuclear scientist, um, James McCanny. I don't quote me on that. I have to get his clip and put it up on my site. Oh, Professor McCanny. He's uh, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, he was saying that you can pound rods down into the melted cores. I don't know that, the answer to that. I, I know either. what you're talking about. Uh, McCanny has been around. I don't. 